They slap in some slabs of butter. And believe me, I should use more than that. And give it a try. Mm. I can almost feel this side of my arteries clogging. Today I'm going to show you how to make a pineapple bun in three steps. I'm going to timestamp uh, in the description box below the three steps. First, we have to make a tong jong or yudani mix. Two, I'm going to show you how to make the pineapple bun crust. And three, I'm going to show you how to make the bread itself, the milk bread. This is a very simple, easy recipe. It makes eight pineapple buns, so you don't need to use a stand mixer. It's all going to be done by hand, and I'm going to show you exactly how to do it and what to look out for to make sure that the bread is just right. And you'll also find the full ingredients and the instructions on my website. So let's get going. All right, so now to make the tong jong, I need one tablespoon of all-purpose flour and just 70 milliliters of milk. So I haven't turned on my heat yet. Right now at this point, I just want to help take out the lumps just by mixing it. So you want a nice, clean, smooth liquid. So I'm gonna turn my heat on low, medium. Okay, right there. And what you want to do is you want to reduce this and make a thick paste. The reason why you want to make a tong jong is because this is going to help your bread become very moist and give it a slightly longer shelf life. This is done with a lot of Asian breads. I think it originated from Japan. It's, widely, it's also widely used in uh, Chinese uh, bakeries as well. So one tip is that you also want to keep stirring it and sometimes I'll take it off the heat because I don't want to overcook this paste. See, it's starting to thicken up. And the reason why I want to do this first is because when I add this into the bread dough, it has to be cooled down. Okay, as you can see, it's starting to thicken up quickly. This has been only about two minutes. Again, just move it around so that it won't burn or overcook. Okay, I switched off the heat and this is how it looks. Kind of like Elmer's glue, right? And now I just move it into a bowl and just let it cool off. And you just want to put plastic wrap on top of the tong jong so that it won't develop a skin on top. All right, so now it's time to make the pineapple bun crust. The crust is basically just a cookie dough. So it's a cookie dough on top of a milk bread. Isn't that cool? The reason why this is the second step is because, because the cookie dough has to cool down in the fridge so that it'll be easier to roll it out and put it on top of the pineapple bun later. So I'm going to need 115 grams of AP flour, all-purpose flour. You don't need to sift it. And I need half a teaspoon of salt. This is a quarter teaspoon of baking powder. This is food grade ammonia. It's also called baker's ammonia. This is what people use before baking soda. But baker's ammonia is great for creating a nice crunchy crust on top of cookies. If you don't have baker's ammonia, which most likely you don't, you can use baking soda. But I'm using this because as you can see, I have about like a year's worth. Um, I rarely use this ingredient. If so, if you're thinking about buying it, don't buy it. And it smells like very old pea. And trust me, I'm from New York City. I've used a New York City subway train, so I know what old pea smells like. And I only need a quarter <laughs> teaspoon. And I also need about half a teaspoon of water to activate it. If you're using baking soda, you don't need to add any water to the baking soda, okay? Just putting it out there. All right, so half a teaspoon of water. And I have to mix it up first. Yep, it smells like a New York City subway station. All right, now, so I'm gonna add my baking ammonia. And here's one egg yolk. I'm gonna add a teaspoon of vanilla extract. Just drop it in. And I need 60 grams of fine sugar. Drop it in. And finally, I need 60 grams of room temperature butter. What the? Okay, so that's 63 grams, no problem, close enough. Drop it in there. And now it's time to get dirty. 
I also want to mention I have some milk ready. Um, I might need to add about a tablespoon of milk just to get it, just to get it more moist, but I'll see how it goes. So always just have a little bit of milk on standby. Just use your hands and squeeze it into a dough. If you feel that your butter is melting too fast, just put this dough mix into the refrigerator for about five minutes. I'm just gonna add just a little bit of milk just to help it along. Just a little bit. There you go, that's it. Just a touch. Okay, and that's it. This is a topping for the pineapple bun. And now we just wrap it up and leave it in the refrigerator. Okay, now before I get into making a bread dough, there's two things that I have to remind you. One is to have your ingredients at room temperature, especially your milk and your eggs, because there is yeast involved and yeast needs like a warmish environment to do its magic. Second thing is I know that making bread dough, especially for first timers, can be a headache because you don't know what to look out for. So I'm gonna show you the visual cues and especially how it's supposed to feel before you do anything else and to make sure that your pineapple buns come out exactly the way it's supposed to. All right, so it's time to make the milk bread dough. So, so I have a big bowl here. I'm gonna need 300 grams of bread flour. If you want to get into baking, you really need a kitchen scale. It'll help you out immensely. And I also need 20 grams of milk powder. Milk powder is widely used in Asian bakeries. In there. And this is 20 grams of cake flour. Because bread flour is high gluten, the cake flour will help lighten up the, uh, the bread dough. So 20 grams of cake flour. 45 grams of sugar. And just half a teaspoon of salt. I'm gonna put the salt on top of the sugar and direct contact with salt could really affect the yeast ability to do its work. So I'm, so I'm gonna put the yeast away from the salt. And I also need one large egg and then I throw in my tong jong. So the milk I'm gonna add slowly later, I'm gonna show you. And also I have 20 grams of butter here. So just keep 20 grams of butter on the side because first we're gonna mix this up. Getting this dough just right should take about five to 10 minutes of hand kneading. So I know it requires some work, but that's just the way it is. As I mentioned before, a lot of people, they get into trouble because they don't know that the bread dough is kneaded enough. All right, so time to get dirty. Get in with your hands, start mixing it. Okay, so right now everything feels a little bit dry. It's just slightly moist from the egg. So I'm gonna add just about half of the milk first. Okay, because we gotta get it wet. And right now there's some tension in the dough. So I'm gonna add just a little bit more of the water. All right. So now this is how it's supposed to look. It's very sticky. I'm gonna add the rest of the milk. And there is some resistance, so that's a good sign. And take a good look at the bowl. It looks dirty around the side, right? So just, so just remember that. Cause it's gonna look very different when I'm finished. Turn the bowl every so often like what I'm doing. The reason why I don't have a stand mixer right now is because uh, the cheap ones, they don't work so good. And the best ones are obviously KitchenAids. But KitchenAid in Thailand is very expensive. It's about, um, I think it's about 1,000 US for a five quart mixer. While I think back in the US, it's about 300 or $400. So there's no way I can justify buying a $1,000 five quart uh, KitchenAid. Okay, so at this point the dough is very very sticky and you're gonna get a little bit of a good workout. So we're doing this to get the glutens forming. This way your bread has a nice little chewy texture. Okay, as you can see my bread dough has come together into a ball and that's when you know that we're almost there to add, that it's almost time to add the butter. And you're gonna be grieving just a little bit harder or maybe sweating under your nose like me.
Okay, there you go. Now, whoops, just throw it around a few times. Stretch it out. And then knead it out a little bit more because it's time to add the butter. Okay, so this is the visual cues. So the dough has started to form into a ball and it's sticking together. It's not like it's not like all over the place. So just open up a little bit. So right now it's time, it's perfect time to add the butter. It is definitely not as sticky as before, but once I add this butter, it's gonna get sticky again. And as you can see, this butter is like room temperature, it's very soft, so. So here we go. Fold it over. And then we go again. All right, as you can see, the outside of the dough is getting a little bit shiny. It's not just about the butter, but it's also about the glutens forming properly on this bread dough. If you're using a stand mixer, uh, this is also the visual cue that you're looking for. And that is, look, the bowl, it looks a lot cleaner than when we first started because the dough is picking up all the bits that was hanging on the side. It looks ready, but it's not. I'm gonna need this for another, well, about two minutes. So you take it, put it over, rotate it, put your knuckles in, and it is, and there's a lot of tension, a lot of resistance when I'm putting my knuckles in, okay? As I said, it's a workout. If you do get tired, it is okay to take a rest. And I need a rest too, take a look at my face. Sometimes take the dough like this and just throw it down like that. It helps stretch the glue in the flour. All right, that's two minutes. Okay, you take a look at your dough. So rotate the dough and just roll it under just slightly to make a nice ball shape. All right. Okay, there you go, beautiful dough. Now I had some butter inside this bowl, I'm gonna use it. And just spread it on the bottom. Just help grease it. Okay, and just drop it in. Okay, so this dough has to rest for about 15 minutes. So, so put some plastic wrap on top. So this took me about five to seven minutes from start to finish, right? So it's not that bad. And just cover it with a damp towel and just let it sit there for 15 minutes while I go take a nap. All right, so 15 minutes are up and it is time to knead my dough again. The reason why you want to do this is because you want, it's like kind of like working out. Your bread dough just worked out, so it needs a little bit of rest. And the second time that I'm kneading, it's sort of just like shocking the muscle, you know? So I'm gonna knead it again for about three to five minutes. And as you can see, the bread dough is much, much more soft and it's a lot smoother. So just three to five minutes, and it should be perfectly fine. So it's the same kneading technique. Just roll one end over, use your knuckles and push in. My knuckles are doing all the work. Okay, so I've been kneading for about five minutes. So it is time to let the yeast do its work. I'm doing the same thing. I'm just tucking underneath and rolling, tucking underneath and rolling until the surface is nice and smooth. Okay, grease the bottom of the bowl with some butter or some oil, whatever you have. And just pop it down. Okay, so this is another important step in making bread. You need to let your yeast uh, do its work. This dough has to double in size. Depending on the temperature where you live, it could be 45 minutes, one hour half, or whatever. But the main visual cue is that this bread dough 
have to double in size. And that's when you know that the yeast has done its work. Now for me, I'm in Thailand, so the weather is a little bit warm. So I can leave it here like this and it should be just fine in my kitchen. But if you're living in some place that's a lot colder, um, you might want to stick this into a oven, put in a mug of hot water or maybe two mugs or whatever, depending on how cold your place is. And then it should be just fine. Okay, so for me, one hour has passed and take a look at my dough. And as you can see, well, it's nearly tripled in size actually. So this is good. And we're almost at the home stretch. I'm saying almost because there's still work that needs to be done. So I'm gonna roll out my dough. I need to break down my bread dough into eight buns. Spread out some flour put some, and put some flour on your hands too. And I need to weigh my dough. This is about 620 grams. Okay, so 620 grams. So I need to break this up into eight buns. So 620 divided by eight is, um. hold on one second. So 620 divided by eight. Sorry guys, there's a reason why this channel is called Wally Cooks Everything and not, not Wally has a difficult time doing stupid easy math. So because my work surface is small, I also need to break this up in half into about 310. Oh, perfect, 300, 311, okay. So just flour the surface area, but not a lot of flour, okay? Just flatten it out, try to make it into a rectangle, and then just roll it up like that. And I need to cut out four buns that are about 75 grams. So cut that in half, this in half. Let's see if 75 grams or not. All right, so each of these balls are about 75 grams. Uh, this 74, 76, doesn't matter. So I'm gonna roll these first. So what I do is just flatten it out with your thumbs like this. And then with this thumb, you want to push one edge over and then again, hold it like that, like that, like that. Like it looks like I got magic fingers, but I don't, trust me. It's a very easy, simple move to do. Anybody can do it. And then you got a nice ball. And then to seal the bottom end, we just do it like this. Just make like a cup with your hands and just roll it around on the bottom. And you got a nice little bun. So I'm gonna show you again. And every time I'm pinching the dough in, I'm rotating the dough every so slightly and just do it like three rotations and it's just fine. And just roll it to seal the bottom. And look, if you got friends that are easily impressed, you can do it with two hands. And then this is gonna have to proof for 30 minutes. And I prefer putting it inside my oven to proof. So I'm gonna take this out to my oven. And just spray some water so it doesn't dry out. And we'll come back in 30 minutes. Okay, so my bread has proofed. And right now I'm just gonna add some egg wash on top of the bun so that it doesn't dry out. Just cover the entire bun with egg. This way it'll also get a nice brown color when it bakes. And while I'm doing this, I already set my oven to 200 degrees Celsius uh, just to let it preheat. And here's my pineapple bun crust. I took it out of the fridge about 10 minutes ago just to take the chill off and it'll be easier for me to uh, roll it out. I'm just gonna check the weight real quick. 266 grams and I need eight pieces. So 265 grams, so 265 divided by eight. That's about like 30 grams, right? So I need to cut out 30 grams, about 31 grams uh, each uh, for each topping. I'm gonna put down a piece of plastic. I'm gonna measure out about 31 grams, 35, close enough. So I'm just gonna roll this into a ball, place it between two pieces of plastic, and I'm gonna use something flat or you can use the palm of your hand and just push down. And there you go. It does not have to be perfectly round. I just drape it over. Today it's really warm, so I have to work a little bit quick. 33, close enough. Check the mic and make sure it's See, look at that. Mine aren't perfectly round. Some are even broken, but no problems. When it cooks, you're not gonna see it. And besides, this gives it a little rustic look. Rustic in cooking terms just mean not tidy. And just one final brush with egg wash on top of the crust. This will give the cookie crust a nice brown color, especially when the cookie starts to crack on top, which gives it a signature pineapple bun look. All right, so now that this is finished, into a 200 degrees Celsius oven for about 11 to 12 minutes. Well, check this out. My pineapple buns blew up. All right, time to get out. Oh, look at that. 
Got a nice crust. All right, check this out. Okay, check this out, my pineapple buns. As you can see, even though I only made eight buns, these are huge buns. And once it cools down, I'm gonna do something really special with it. It's gonna be Hong Kong style pineapple buns. Okay, so it's cool enough to touch. Let me dig out one bun. It is still very warm. Okay, so there's a shop in Hong Kong that is very famous for their pineapple buns. And they're famous because they eat it in a very particular way. So I'm gonna show you what they do. Check that out. Beautiful bread, yeah? And then they slap in some slabs of butter. And believe me, I should use more than that. But honestly, I would like to see my daughter's first birthday. And that's why I'm not gonna eat that much butter. I'll give it a try. Mm. <laughs> it's like being in Hong Kong. The bread is so soft and the cookie crust is so good. I can almost feel this side of my arteries clogging. I mean, this is really perfectly baked. Mm. The bread is just so soft and moist. I'm telling you, it's great. And there you go. This is a delicious pineapple bun recipe. Give this a try. I know you'll love it. As you can see, it's very easy to make, especially if you follow each and every of my steps. I'm pretty sure you're gonna get some really good results in your own home too. And it's not that difficult at all. So give it a try, okay? All right, everybody, thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, give it a thumbs up. And if this is the first time watching me, uh, please do subscribe. I make videos about once every week or so. And to all my current subscribers, thank you very much. I appreciate your support. And I hope to see all of you again next time. Take care and goodbye.